Okay, so we're back talking about my uh, orange and green bike, formerly known as Mean Green. Uh, when we were racing, we, I lost this nut and we couldn't find another one to work and I tried to put one on there and cross-threaded one on there and screwed it all up. And But so what we ended up doing is we ended up drilling a hole and putting a cotter pin in it to keep it from sliding off. But even with that cotter pin in there, you know, there's a lot of slop. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this old shaft. I got this guy here. to probably clean this plate up a little bit or not punch this bad boy out of here okay i'm gonna go ahead and cl clean this guy up and then i'll check back in with you guys all right i wanted to remind myself and you guys why we're working on this again is because our original swing arm bent and it was causing the chain to come off during the race not only that, we had that driver pulley that was loose on there because we had to drill it and put a cotter pin in it. So then that sprocket up there was kind of loose. Um, but also, I want to do a chain tensioner on here. It just needs it, just in case it gets a little bit of slack, you know, so you don't have to run the chain so tight. So I got this, uh, this is an original chain tensioner from the CT200U. Coleman bike that uh, some of these parts came from and uh, I was looking and I had this skateboard this old longboard wheel in my toolbox and I'm pretty sure it's the same as on this shaft so let's get uh, a pick and see if we can figure out if this wheel will fit on here Okay, get that snap ring out of there. Pull this wheel off. Oh, we got a bearing stuck on there. Okay, well, uh, we gotta get a bearing off, that bearing off of there, but it's the same diameter, so I think we're gonna run this guy. But what I wanna do is I actually wanna take this over to, oh, I see that popped out the bearing. Uh, I wanna take this over to my uh, lathe and let's turn the little groove into this Not that it really needs it, but it's kind of a huge diameter So I want to make it smaller and give the, the, the chain a spot to ride Kind of gummy. It doesn't really want to machine per se You gotta be gentle with it it's Pretty good though Okay, we got this chain tensioner finalized in here. See a little spring action there. Um, I'm ready to ride this thing. I don't even want to take it off to put paint on that little part there. So I'm thinking we put this thing back together. Uh, there's no bolt in here, so I need to do that. I need to put a nut or a nut. There's no nut on there, so and. This is totally in the way, so let's go ahead and pop this back off. Okay. And now, we've got some new chain. Uh, RK 420 premium, premium motocross. Uh, I had a really nice chain on here before, but I ruined it during the race. And this is my old one with a weird new link, so 
Uh, I'm gonna have to cut this chain and I'll come back with you guys when I got the right length chain. So I wanted to show you guys uh, one of the things I do when I use a chain breaker is I grind the head of the the link off that I want to grind or the pin that I want to pop out. So uh, you don't even need a chain breaker to do this. You can just use a punch, but chain breaker is very nice to have. You can even do this without grinding the head off. Uh, it makes it a lot more difficult and so much more difficult on the tough on the chain breaking tool. It seems like to me, but you can do it. <sighs> I just think it's way easier on the tool. Comes out easier if you grind the head off, head, head of it off. We need to put the driver on. Ooh, here's another big thing. We have a juggernaut, but I want to get this thing back together as is and run it so we can get some data from it, you know, top speed and stuff, and then put the juggernaut on and see what kind of difference it makes. So let's finish putting this thing back together. Next is the driver. thing so that's ready to ride on that side we don't have a pull starter on this side uh, one of the reasons for that is because I was gonna pull the engine out of this but screw it I do need to check the valve lash pretty bad Ooh, so let's put the pull start back on this thing and then I might do this elbow that's another thing that's really been bothering me this elbow is not quite works but I don't it's not ideal so I got some tubing to actually make a 45 out of this and then bolt the carb on a little more solid so let's get this pull start on first and then we'll work on that here is the intake flange I actually cut probably an inch off of there because I'm trying to get this even closer so that's my my intake flange here's a little piece of tubing that I need to put on here just like that this thing cool off and clean it up I want to run a burr down inside there to make sure I get all these little little guys in there and then we'll throw it back on see what it looks like maybe hear how it performs but yeah we gotta let this thing cool off a little bit so I got this thing welded up and there it is on there it's a little closer to the frame that I wanted the carb to be, but hey, it's pretty nice actually. It's a good, it's a good spot if it doesn't cause me any problems from being there. So, all right, Kenny's here. Got the MR2 here. We got mini bike stuff to work on though. Let's grab this tire. We need this tire. Probably without the water. All right, we have uh, Fletcher's bike here, which is a Trailmaster with a 420 swap. We got to do a few things. We need to do a chain. Oh, what? oh yeah, and a 40 series torque converter. Uh, we need to put this front tire on. 
we'll do a chain tensioner and mess with some other stuff. Clean it up a little bit. Clean it up. We gotta finish Brian's bike up. Chain tensioner, engine, paint, some other small stuff. But that's pretty getting pretty close as well. Yeah, finish the swing arm. So that's the goal for today, I think, is gonna be to finish these, these two, two bikes. bikes. Get the bikes done out of the way. Yep, we need bikes for the gambler, for OG. Yep. Very important. We're working on making chain tensioners for both of these bikes. Uh, so far I have this piece of rod machined down to fit this guy to pivot off of here. And I'm trying to thread the end here so we can just put a bolt on it to hold it in place. So it can pivot off of there. So these are our axle adjusters from the Trailmaster, and you can see it's pretty bent, but this one on the other side is completely stripped out. So I'm going to find another bolt, we're going to do something, and we're going to fix this, fix, straighten this one out, and make it so it won't bend like this again, hopefully. So that's what's coming up here. Alright, so we got these tensioners sorted out so now we're gonna give them a place to actually sit so before this was sitting in here like this but then when you tighten it up it wants to the bolt wants to go off to the side and tweaks the whole thing so I'm gonna take the flapper wheel and I'm gonna flatten this out a little bit and then we're gonna take a drill bit and a center punch put a spot for this round part of the bolt end to fit into off for a second all right so we got an interesting task here I've seen this done before but I've always been a little um, apprehensive about doing it but we're going to weld the carburetor flange to the adapter for the engine because the boot just keeps coming off and it's a pain in the butt and carb falls off and crazy stuff so we're just gonna actually weld these two together. And, uh, but first I'm gonna take this carb all the way apart and we're gonna clean it and let it kind of dry so we don't light ourselves on fire. Won't even two. go that far. She's gonna be two. Tighten it down, see what happens. There you go. That looks good. Yep. Looks proper Ugh. for the post apocalyptic bike that it is. And it's clean. Yeah. Which is nice. And hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. We haven't even tried to start it yet. Jump box? It needs a start handle. 
as well. Is the battery dead? I do have a jump box. A working jump box. Oh, good. I went ahead and just ordered a new a battery offline, a better one. It's like an AGM version of the lead. Oh, the battery just died on it? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's just a lead acid battery, like yeah. these cheap, shitty lead acid batteries. So you just took your heart breathing apart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ordered the right battery, but it's an AGM. A nicer, a nicer battery. So hopefully it, hopefully it lasts longer. Okay. Net on. Crank her up. Oh, oh trip was on. Yeah. Uh, gas on, yeah. Come on, baby. Is it, does it have gas? I don't know. No. Not really? No, it does. Not much. Should we put some gas in it? Yeah. Working on everybody else's shit. I don't know, ours just <laughs> such a stays. Yeah, ours just kind of stays shitty. Now it's pissing out the damn. That's new. Come on, baby. Yeah. You know the floats? Oh, that's not right. The floats aren't right. Shut it off. Shut it off! Why? What'd you do? The float wasn't going back in there right. It's a weird kind of float, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's right. Oh, okay. Four and a half. Yeah. Can't be right. Well, I don't know what you did. <laughs> I'll find out. Yeah, that's the float. Oh, the floats must be in, up, be in upside down. That's what it is. Oh. Yep, they're in upside down. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm. Yep. There we go. The car got a good cleaning, though, too. So, I blew the whole thing out. Good. We did 50 miles an hour, top speed. 50 miles an hour on a bike, son. So let's see if we can improve that with the juggernaut. Stay tuned because on the next episode, we will be putting the juggernaut on this thing and checking it out and see what it does. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.